Well, hi guys, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you're here, glad you're stopping by. Uh, I'm in the studio, man cave, basement, my basement. Not my mom's basement, but my basement. It looks nice though, it looks nice, it looks really nice. I uh, got it all decorated. There's a lot left to do. Uh, maybe eventually, once it's completely finished, uh, I can show you guys more and more of it. Maybe do, like, here's my studio. It's awesome, by the way. Um, we're not really here to talk about my studio. Um, but I just, you know, I, I, I am proud of it. And I hope you guys like it, too. Uh, I haven't been making a lot of content. Um, I, I planned on it. Um, you know, I figured the first of the year I would start getting back in the making more content. Um, it's really hard for me to figure out what I want to do. One thing I do want to do um, eventually is start doing uh, drive-alongs where you know, Miss Bits and I will go to local businesses and different places in this area. That way you guys can realize it's not quite a shithole. I mean, people paint it as this awful place, but it's not. It's really not that bad. There's way worse places. Um, but here where I live, in this part of Ashland, it's not too bad. Uh, if you go about five minutes away, then it gets pretty bad. Um, you know, this area, there is a problem with drugs, um, which that's everywhere. Uh, even big cities and small little towns like this, drugs is pretty bad. But anyways, not here to talk about that either. So, I've been meaning to talk about this for a little while. For a little while now. Um, you know, and it's a movie. And it's kind of a movie review. And spoilers, by the way. So, it was last week, I think. I, uh, Miss Bits and I, we decided to go to the movie theater and watch two movies. Like, we just lived at the movie theater. And watched two fucking huge movies. Uh, one was shorter than the other, uh, and Avatar 2 was like three hours long, uh, which both, the, the, that movie is amazing, but the movie I really, 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 really love, and it's going to stick with me for a long time, is a little movie called The Whale, um, and the, the name of the movie is quite on point, um, now, I, th there's going to be spoilers. I, I can't help it. This is spoiler territory. Um, but the, the, the movie tackles a couple things that are up my alley. Um, so maybe you guys will enjoy this. So you guys know I'm a big guy. I'm, I'm a big guy. I used to be way bigger, uh, almost 400 pounds. Um, you know, I ended up getting a weight loss surgery, uh, lost a lot of weight. Um, you know, I, I think I was on the cusp of 400. I was like 390 um, for a while. Diabetes and all that stuff. And, you know, I got a weight loss surgery. Lost a lot of weight. Got down to 296. And here I am today sitting at 316. So let me go ahead and tell you this. A lot of people that get these surgeries, uh, usually this is what happens. They go back to their old ways and gain weight. Some people gain more weight. Luckily, I haven't got that far two years out, um, and I am trying to remedy these things. Uh, I am, you know, I, I, I still have a problem of putting things in my mouth that I shouldn't insert dick joke there. Um, and there's a, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of hard. Like one, one thing, one thing is when you do these surgeries, um, you have to see a psychiatrist and they have to check you up. They're like, Hey. Yeah, you're you're good. You know, many times I failed. Uh, yeah, that's how I found out I had a severe bipolar depression was from this. Um, you know, and all the times I had to go to the hospital for trying to kill myself. Uh, you know, they they said no. They said no, and they finally, uh, after a while of not causing problems with myself, they finally let me do it. I thought I was ready. I wasn't. I wasn't, uh, you know, things were good, lost a lot of weight, um, you know, still today I eat like a bird, but I eat too much, like I'm eating bad shit that I shouldn't be eating, um, 
but I can't eat as much as I used to. It's just the bad stuff that I do eat just makes things worse. Um, yeah, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared for it. Uh, I gained weight back, uh, and I'm trying to rem remedy that. So hopefully, hopefully we can get into the tune of losing weight, and you can follow me. And I know I've been saying this for over a year uh, that I'm going to lose weight, but you know, it's it is what it is. I'm going to try my best. Um, but anyways, anyways, we're talking about the will. Um, uh, and it's about a man, he's 600 pounds, and he's confined to his home, confined to a wheelchair, his couch, a walker, um, basically stuck with himself. Now, spending a lot of time with yourself, especially if you go through a lot of things, uh, you know, rather be divorce, death, uh, you know, your health just getting bad, people making fun of you, uh, you eventually, you're going to crack. You're going to crack. Um, and, you know, I, I have this problem myself. I, I don't think highly of myself. I don't. I really don't. You're probably wondering where I'm trying to get at and when this is a, something about the well. You know, I, I don't have high opinions on myself. You know, I get a lot of really awesome comments from people. Uh, I see people that watch my videos or family members, or friends that say that I'm a good person. Um, and, you know, all these great things has happened in the last few years. I still, I am self, like, I talk about myself like shit. Uh, I don't think highly of myself. I, 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 I feel like I don't deserve what I have. Um, and those are the kind of the feelings you get when you're stuck with yourself. Um... And again, you don't have to be just stuck with yourself. When I say stuck with yourself, it doesn't mean that you're in one spot, can't move. I'm talking about just hiding in your own head. And it kind of amplifies. If Again, if you're by yourself stuck in a situation where you can't leave, uh, the walls kind of close in. And this is kind of what happens with um, Charlie. Charlie is the main character of the well. Uh, Charlie, he, he, he was married. He had a kid. Uh, they got a divorce because he decided to leave his wife for a man. Um, and that man that he was with died suicide. Bad, bad, bad. Not only that, but he didn't have a relationship with his daughter. Now his daughter, he hasn't seen his daughter. I think it was 11 or 13 years Something along those lines. Uh, his wife kept her away from him. And I guess his daughter didn't know that. So, But she blamed uh, Charlie for not wanting to see her. And, you know, he said he sent her money. I guess the mom didn't say anything about that either. Um, if If you've been in a situation when your parents get divorced... That sucks. Really does. It's hard on kids. Uh, I went through it myself uh, when I was 11, maybe younger. Uh, my brother, my sister. My sister wasn't really old enough to know. Uh, but, you know, we had to watch, um, you know, the divorce. And it was crazy because, you know, my dad, he's an alcoholic. He's got a temper. There was abuse, um, physical and, uh, you know, vocal, very vocal. And, you know, you had those moments when your parents are like, come live with me. Your, your mom's stupid. Or come live with me. Your dad's a fucking idiot. Um, that kind of stuff. A little bit harsher than what I just said. Uh, but, you know, I ended up staying with my mom. My brother stayed with my mom. And my sister stayed with my mom. Best decision I made when I was that young. My mom is almost everything to me. Uh, there, there's two people that mean uh, so much to me. And I'm not saying that other people don't, but, you know, Miss Bits and my mom. Um, and, I, you know, I, I, I couldn't imagine a life where I decided to go with my dad instead of my mom. But anyways, anyways, Charlie is dying. He knows he's dying. Um, you know, he won't go to the hospital. He doesn't have insurance, but he has a lot of money, uh, cause he's just kind of saved up because he's a teacher. 
Um, you know, the only thing he does is spend it on food and bills, and he just saves the money. And he tries to bring his daughter into his life to try to fix things before he dies. And one of the things at the beginning of the movie, there's a character that comes in. He is supposedly a missionary. And he comes in and he finds Charlie doing something. I won't say here. And Charlie gets, he starts choking, uh, his, holding his chest. And Charlie looks at the guy and says, read this essay. And this is very important because in the essay, he reads, you'll find out at the end, and I'll, and I'll talk about it at the end. Again, this is spoiler territory, guys. This is big. Um, but anyways, anyways, he reads it, and Charlie calms down. We go, and you find out that the guy that comes in that's a missionary is not really who he says he is. Uh, he is a runaway, basically. But for some reason, he's shown up at this house to meet Charlie. There was a reason for it. The daughter comes in his life. She hates Charlie. She basically, you know, he tries to keep her in by saying, I'll give you all my money if you just talk to me. Stay with me. You know, Charlie's trying to help her out, saying how awesome and beautiful and amazing she is. And she doesn't want to take it because her mind, in her mind, her dad's a piece of shit. And she wants him to die. Now, I couldn't imagine... Uh, being a father and your daughter just says, hey, I want you to fucking die. I don't care. You're a piece of shit. You know, I can imagine that. Like, it's hard enough to hear that myself. Like, I'm not saying that anybody said that to me lately, but I've had people say, hey, I'm worthless. I'm a piece of shit. It's not good. It hurts. And this is the mental health aspect of this stuff. Uh, so Charlie, Charlie is trying everything he can to reconcile because he knows he doesn't have much long left. Uh, when things don't work out, then you get to see the mental parts come in and the physical where Charlie will go into binging fits where he'll just eat and eat whatever he can grab. He'll just eat and eat and eat. Um, and we all, I'm sure you guys do, um, you know, we eat because we like to eat. It makes us feel good. I'm not going to lie. I like a hamburger. It makes me happy. Uh, I like a piece of cake every once in a while. Some Chinese, some Italian. Um, it makes me feel happy when I'm just piling in the food. Uh, and I'm sure you guys are the same way. Um, and a lot of that is, like, if you're sad, um, like, if you're, if you're unhappy, uh, turning to something you love, and if it happens to be food, that's what you're going to turn to. And uh, Charlie, the way he is, and I can say I am, partially, I can't blame it all on mental health, but part of it is, like, I did this to myself because I don't control it. But Charlie has problems. I've got problems. I've got diabetes. i got heart problems. And this is from the part where I tell you, don't be like me. Don't be like Charlie. Uh, try to do better. I'm trying to do better. That seems hypocritical, but, you know, there could be a chance that next year I'll be sitting here the same way or gain more weight because I failed, because I always fail. Um, you know, I just got to get that in my head. But anyways, uh, this has devastating effects on Charlie uh, for doing this for years, uh, swallowing his sadness. Um, he knows he's dying. Well, there's other characters. I don't really want to get too into it. It's this caretaker. Um, you know, she loves Charlie. Uh, she'd do anything for Charlie. But she sees, she knows too. Everybody knows he's dying. Um, but partial way through the movie, uh, the wife comes in, the ex-wife comes in, and they talk. She, you know, feels bad about Charlie. Uh, they have some touching moments. Um and it just goes bad. It goes bad. It goes really bad. It doesn't go the way you expect. There's not a happy ending to this. Not a happy ending to this. You know, as much as Charlie wants his stuff to work out, it doesn't. It ultimately doesn't work out. 
uh, near the end of the movie, and I like I said, I don't want to go too deep into it because there's more to it. And I do want you to experience your, your, yourself. This is probably this is probably one of those movies that's going to stick with you for a while. Uh, believe me, I promise. At the end of the movie, Charlie is with his daughter. She's storming out to the door, and he grabs his heart. He's choking, and he can't breathe. And he looks at his daughter. And a little while into the movie, she tries to get Charlie to stand up and walk to her. Uh, now, he can't do this without a cane or a walker or a wheelchair. And anyways, he hands her this paper and he says, read this. Read this for me. It's a great essay. It's the most amazing essay I've ever read. Well, anyways, she starts reading it, and he decides to, his last moments, get up and walk towards her. And it comes to find out that what that essay was, was something his daughter actually wrote that he's kept with him for years. And it made her, like, there's a moment, like, the the, the ending of the movie kind of, it ends, but not in a way you would expect. Ultimately, it, to, to my interpretation, Charlie dies. Doesn't show Charlie die, but does show some symbolism, and uh, you find out that the whole time, the one thing that was keeping Charlie moving was his daughter's uh, words and how he wanted to be a part of her life, but ultimately the way he was, he couldn't be that way. So, and the end, he wanted to let her know she's amazing, and he tried to make the last steps towards her. Uh, all the mental shit, everything he tries to beeline towards her, and ultimately, she dies. She dies, and everybody, everybody finds out that hey, Charlie's been keeping this essay for years and whenever Charlie thinks he's going to die or he gets in a really bad spot he reads this thing we talk about security blankets from time to time how many of you guys have something you grab rather it be a guitar a picture, a note uh, your favorite song and you grab these things when you're feeling really awful I call that a security blanket and that note, that essay, was a security blanket for Charlie. It just made him feel good. It made him happy. It made him not think about everything else. I think that's important. I think that's an important thing. When we're talking about mental health stuff, like I think it's important to latch on to something. Um, some people don't latch on to much at all. They just go. Um, you know, I had my best friend. He killed himself. He had a wife. He had a he had an awesome kid, and he had a child coming. But he didn't have anything to latch onto. He didn't latch onto them. And at the end, he he committed suicide. You know. I'm thankful at this time in my life that, you know, I have something to grasp. You know, not only do I have the kind words coming from you guys, but I have a beautiful wife. I have a home. I have an amazing job. I still grab things from time to time. Uh, you know, rather be my guitar or video games. Pokemon. I have all kinds of things that I can grab and latch on to. I think that's important. Uh, and I mean, you can have your own safe space. But ultimately, I think the, the true meaning of the movie is, you know, hold on to something. You know, and at the end of the movie, I'm going to tell you, like, I cried, man. I cried during this movie. 
because I see myself in Charlie's position, and I'm sure if you watch this movie, um, the performance from Brendan Fraser, which is really good, really good. Uh, any awards he gets from this, uh, totally deserved. Um, anything that guy, anything, uh, I think it's Dan Onfrosky, any movie he makes, you're guaranteed to have amazing performances. Uh, and you're going to have uh, an award-winning film. And this happens to be uh, happens to be uh, I, I forgot his name and I just said it. Um, <laughs> that's so stupid. That's so stupid. But anyways, and I forgot his name. It's going to kill me at the end of this. I'm going to, what? What's his name? And I just fucking said it. Don't do prescribed mental drugs for years, guys. Actually, if your doctor prescribed you for something, take it. If it affects you badly, tell your doctor immediately because that's going to happen. You're going to go through tons of different medicines uh, when it comes to mental health and someone's going to fuck with you. So if they do, you immediately tell the doctor. Brendan Fraser. There we go. Brendan Fraser. Um, he, do, he does a really good job. Um, but ultimately, Charlie... You know, he's a victim of his own self. And mental health played a big part of it. It does. It does. And like I said, you see you see this all the time. There's TV shows on, you know, satellite or whatever. Uh, Hulu and stuff about people being 600, 700 pounds and uh, watching them live. And it's sad. It's sad. And these people talk about, hey, I didn't, you know, I just... Most of them, every single one of them will say, hey, I just, I, I eat when I'm sad. I eat my feelings. I eat my emotions. So, <laughs> this this has gone on too long. And I know it probably won't get a lot of views. But if you do watch, if you get to the end of this, uh, do yourself a favor. Even though I spoiled the hell of this movie. I'm telling you, go watch this movie um, and picture yourself. Picture yourself as Charlie. Uh, compare yourself to Charlie. Because I'm going to bet there's going to be some similarities um, with him to you. And like I said, the, the performance is so believable um, that you can't help but placing yourself in these things. Um, another big thing about this movie is they talk about faith a little bit. Um, some people hold on to faith. Nothing wrong with that. If you are a Christian, a uh, Satan worshiper, or whatever you do, if you praise trees or uh, the spaghetti monster, um, hold on to faith. Uh, whatever it is, hold on to it. Um, it might save you. Something. That's another thing you can hold on to. And I, I don't want to go deep into that because I'm not completely spiritual, but I am getting into it. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I definitely appreciate it. I hope uh, maybe some of the things I said uh, affects you in a, a good way. Maybe something I said, and you can let me know in the comments. And if you think I'm wrong, if you think that, you know, I'm just a fat, pathetic loser, let me know in the comments. Uh, I, you know, that's what I need to hear. If that's what I need to hear, maybe that's what I need to hear. Maybe that's the one thing that's going to be like, hey, that guy said I was a fat loser. I am a fat loser. I need to lose weight. And maybe it'll turn me around. I'm not saying just get on there and do that. But I'm sure there will be somebody who says that. You guys, go see The Well. Uh, do yourself a favor. Watch it. Um. Uh, they just started putting it in theaters like it was a limited release, so it should be in your theaters, uh, hopefully. Uh, so watch it and tell me what you think about it. Definitely appreciate it. If you're watching this years from now, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you so much. Um, I love you guys very much, very much, even though I say some dumb things from time to time with my political rants or something. I still love you guys. Even if you disagree with me, I still respect your opinion. I'll see you guys soon. Oh,